the traditional consensus view that all female dogs should be spayed at around six months of age has more recently been challenged as more studies look into the risks and benefits of our female dogs undergoing this operation rather than make the decision easier though the choice has become more confused and it's not as black and white as some would have you believe so then when should you spay a female dog and should you even spay them at all hi i'm dr alex avery from ourpetshealth.com helping you and your pet to live a healthier happier life so if it's the first time that we're meeting, consider subscribing to make sure that you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. So if you want my recommendations, then I feel that the benefit of being spayed certainly outweighs the potential drawbacks. And so that all female dogs who are not going to be used for breeding should be spayed. For small breed dogs, I would still recommend spaying at around six months of age before their first season. For larger dogs though, where there is no risk of them becoming pregnant and where they can be successfully managed while they are on heat, I would actually recommend delaying this operation until they reach about one year of age or a little older. Is this the right decision for you? Well, here are the potential benefits and drawbacks of being spayed, which you can discuss with your veterinarian to reach a decision you are completely comfortable with. Okay, so let's jump into the benefits of being spayed, and um, with the first benefit being really a reduction in mammary cancer. Now, it's generally well accepted that the earlier a bitch is spayed, the lower its chance of getting mammary cancer is. It's said that if spayed before their first season, then a dog's chance of getting this disease is reduced by around 99.5%, so a really huge amount. If spayed before their second season, the risk still falls by about 94%. And if we do it before their third season, it falls by a respectable 75%, so still pretty good. After this, there might not be so much benefit. Although for those dogs that do develop mammary cancer, if they are spayed either at the time of cancer removal or spayed for up to two years before that cancer developed, then they are expected to live longer than those, than those that weren't spayed. Now, although these are well-recognized points, there are actually only a few studies that have looked into this. And so the evidence behind it might not be as strong as, as we perhaps feel it to be. Having said that, I really can't remember the last time that I saw a female dog with mammary tumours who had been spayed when they were young. It does seem to be incredibly rare. So it's all well and good reducing the risk of a disease, but it only really becomes relevant to a decision if we know how common and how serious that condition is. Well, by the age of eight years, 6% of dogs will have mammary masses, and this increases to 13% at 10 years of age. This will only increase as they age further. Of these, half will develop malignant cancers and 60% of those will die as a result of their cancer. So that's one in 12 entire female dogs dying from mammary cancer they develop by the age of 10. This is a significant disease that is significantly reduced by spaying, ideally at some point before their third season. So our next disease to discuss is pyometra. Now, if you want a complete rundown of this disease, then there is a complete discussion about pyometra and its treatment down below. For now, let's just say that this is a life-threatening condition that affects one in four entire females by the age of 10, and it generally requires emergency surgery to cure. Even with treatment, 5% of dogs will die, and without treatment, death is an almost certainty. Spaying a bitch at any age will virtually eliminate the risk of pyometra. Another very significant disease, prevented by spaying. So our third and final major benefit of spaying is an increase in life expectancy. On average, it seems that spayed females live about 26% longer than their entire counterparts. Now that's a pretty big increase. It seems that neutered dogs are less likely to die from infection, from trauma, from degenerative disease um, and vascular disease. Instead though, they are more likely to die from immune mediated disease and from cancer. Also, if a dog actually lives to 12 years of age, then there becomes less of a difference between those that are neutered and those that are still entire. There have been a couple of studies to suggest that there is no difference in life expectancy, but on balance, it appears that spayed female dogs do live longer. The reduction in trauma noted here is likely because neutered dogs are less likely to roam the streets when they are on heat, looking for a dog to mate with. As a result, they are less likely to be hit by a vehicle on the road. There are other behavioral benefits to neutering too, although these may be more noticeable and important in males. Behaviour clearly involves many different biological and environmental factors, 
which all interact with each other. Neutering then is not a cure or a guarantee of prevention of particular behaviours. However, neutered animals are generally less aggressive. With other problem behaviours, a study in Vizslas reported that those neutered before six months were more likely to suffer from various phobias though. If neutered after six months, then the only difference compared to entire dogs was an increase in storm phobias. Behavioural issues are really important to consider, as these are actually the biggest cause of rehoming and deaths in dogs under the age of three years, just because of euthanasia. Proper puppy socialisation plays a huge role in preventing this, and this is covered in a separate video, again linked below. So this covers all the major benefits of getting your female dog spayed. There are still some different benefits, however, which include prevention of uterine and ovarian tumours, although these are actually very rare. Um, eliminating pregnancy related problems and the risk of caesarean section and these can actually be fairly common in certain breeds um, especially our kind of squash nosed big headed breeds reducing sexually transmitted diseases such as brucella and transmissible venereal tumors now these can either be very common or absolutely unheard of depending on which part of the world you live in and your vet can obviously discuss the risk of these with you so you can get a true local picture now my final benefit of spaying is the benefit to a population as a whole rather than to an individual. Every year about one and a half million animals are killed in US shelters due to an inability to find new homes, with about six and a half million entering the shelter system annually. In Australia, an estimated 200,000 animals are killed every year, and in the UK, this number is thought to be about 20,000. Now that's a huge number of dogs and a global issue. And while some may have to be euthanized due to medical or behavioral reasons, many are simply victims of being unwanted and abandoned. If your dog has puppies, can you really guarantee that none of them will end up as part of these terrible statistics? Okay, so those are the benefits, but what about the side effects of being spayed? And do these vary depending on what age a female dog is spayed? Well, there are some potential negatives of being spayed, and some of these are definitely more serious than others. As for whether these downsides outweigh the benefits, well, that's up for you to decide. The first and perhaps most obvious concern is the risk of the surgery itself. Any anaesthetic and surgical procedure carries a degree of risk. Spaying a female dog, it's a routine surgery. However, it's also likely to be the biggest procedure that your pet undergoes in their life and it's not to be underestimated. It's more involved than most other common procedures. While the complication rate is reported to be anything from 3% to 33%, the majority of these complications, they're really minor. They require no specific treatment. At the other end of the spectrum though, death rates are less than 0.1%. Complication rate is something that does tend to vary from clinic to clinic. And so given the nature of the surgery then, this is not something where you want to decide who carries out the procedure based on cost alone. So the next risk of being spayed is again well known, and that's the development of urinary incontinence. It's generally accepted that the younger a dog is spayed, the bigger the risk of incontinence developing. Um, with those spayed before three months of age in particular seeming to be at more risk. Now, this is likely true, however, the evidence is not consistent and it's not really strong to make firm recommendations. It is though for this reason that five to six months is the normal age from which we have kind of spayed our normal pet dogs in the past and not generally younger than this. As for how often this happens, I would say that this is a reasonably common issue in those individuals spayed earlier, but one that's generally very well managed with medications often being treated so well that the problem completely resolves so long as treatment is maintained. So these two issues are ones that we have realised for some time and for many years they have influenced our recommendations as to age of spaying along with the mammary cancer and pyometra risk discussed earlier. The other well-known risk is the fact that spayed animals have a great tendency to gain weight and develop obesity. We need to recognise that once they have been spayed, their energy requirements change and exercise remains vital. Putting in a few management strategies and making sure you're feeding the right amount goes a huge way towards preventing or correcting obesity and its associated problems and obesity is a really major issue and one that I've discussed in several videos in the past. Over the last few years we have started to understand though that there are other downsides to being spayed. With this realisation there's actually become more confusion and more difficulty in making the best decision for each individual dog. We all love to make generalisations and the temptation is really that when some new research is published that we apply these new findings to every single dog. With spay timing however as you'll see, the message is mixed and what is true for one breed may well be the complete opposite for a, for a different breed, even one that's closely related. So 
let's jump into the other big risks that may be associated with spaying at different ages. So of these, cranial cruciate ligament or CCL disease is probably the most common, affecting up to 9% of individuals in at-risk breeds, with larger breeds generally being at a greater risk. Now this is the same injury in dogs as an ACL rupture is in humans. The cruciate ligament, it runs within the knee um, and it can either fray or it can completely rupture and break. Now this damage results in pain and instability within the joint and treatment generally involves surgery to ensure the best long-term results. Now this surgery is not cheap, especially in our larger dogs. So while the condition is correctable to a certain degree, with arthritis in later life becoming much more likely despite treatment, this is definitely something that we want to prevent from happening, if at all possible. So, when does spaying increase the risk of cruciate ligament damage? Well, the answer to this is that the risk, it really depends on dog breed. We have evidence for three breeds. German Shepherds neutered before 12 months were found to have a higher risk compared to entire females. Along the same lines, Golden Retrievers spayed before six months of age were found to have a higher risk of cruciate ligament rupture compared to entire females. Surprisingly though, there was no difference in this disease regardless of when an individual was spayed in Labradors, so a very similar related breed to Golden Retrievers. So what can we make of this? Well, it highlights that generalizations across all breeds that are difficult to make and suggests that some breeds may be more likely to suffer from cruciate ligament rupture if they're spayed before 12 months of age, some if they're spayed before six months of age. It's really difficult though to draw any firm conclusions. The development of abnormal joints in the form of hip and elder, elbow dysplasia is our next risk to consider. Abnormal joints again lead to an early onset of arthritis and so a lifetime of pain management. Again, we have mixed messages depending on breed. In German Shepherds, which are a breed that suffers with a lot of joint disorders, there has been shown to be no relation to being spayed and either hip or elbow dysplasia. Golden Retrievers are the same, but when we consider Labradors that were spayed before two years of age, they seem to have a higher risk of hip dysplasia. Again, different risks for different breeds. Okay, let's talk about cancer next. Now this is the big headline risk that many people will quote when advising against spaying. Don't do it because your dog will get cancer and die. But is this true? In our German Shepherds, recent studies found there to be no link to spaying and the incidence of cancer, although some early work suggested a possible varying inconsistent risk. In Golden Retrievers, one study found an increased risk in blood vessel cancer otherwise known as hemangiosarcoma, in those females spayed after one year of age. However, a similar study then found there to be no increase in risk. With Labradors and Retrievers, there may also be an increased risk in lymphoma, um, in those spayed between six to 11 months. But again, it's not really a consistent finding. I mean, the problem is we're getting one or two studies and it's difficult to draw firm conclusions. So again, mixed messages are given in different studies. For Vizslas, there may be an increased risk of mast cell tumours, lymphoma and hemangiosarcoma, as well as some other cancers appearing higher in spayed females. Interestingly, this risk appeared to be highest when an individual was spayed after 12 months of age. Perhaps the most compelling piece of data reported to date with regard cancer is the fact that in Rottweilers, there is a one in four chance of them developing osteosarcoma if they are spayed when they are younger than a year of age. Now, this is a particularly nasty and aggressive cancer with a terrible prognosis, and so one that should be avoided if at all possible. In Rotties, this one point alone would make me want to wait until they are at least one year of age before spaying them. In other studies that have looked at general pet population rather than specific breeds, there has again been shown to be an increase in various different cancers in neutered compared to entire individuals. This means that the risk is likely to be real, but given the fact that there is much differing evidence out there, firm conclusions are difficult to come by. After all, what exactly does an increase in risk mean? Does it mean that instead of a one in a thousand chance, there is now a one in 900 chance? Or rather, like our Rotties, does it mean there is a one in four chance of in instead of about a one in 10 chance of developing osteosarcoma? Clearly, the latter is incredibly important, but the former may not be too much of an issue to be concerned about. In most cases, we just don't know for sure the true answer to this question. So our last set of conditions to look at, and one of the more recently studied ones, is autoimmune conditions. 
These are caused by a breakdown in the function of a normal immune system, with the result being several different diseases. Of the conditions looked at, in half of them, there did appear to be an association between neutering and disease developing. So having said that, the nature of the study actually doesn't prove that this association is caused by neutering, and while it may indeed play a role, these conditions are generally influenced by many different factors, of which neutering is just one. In fact, genetic and environmental factors have been implicated in many autoimmune conditions. It should also be pointed out that by and large, these are relatively unusual conditions, although clearly significant for any animal who went on to suffer from them. So what does all this mean? Are you thoroughly confused? Well, if so, I'm not surprised. From all of this data, it's impossible to make any sweeping generalizations regarding neutering and some disease risk. A simple one-size-fits-all rules, they're very much more appealing and far easier to apply than a subtle, complicated decision based on various risks and benefits that are not fully understood. If though, there is one thing that should be clear, it's that what's right for one individual may be completely wrong for another. And that might be because of the breed that they are or because of the different risks that people are comfortable living with. And what this means is that you shouldn't feel under pressure to make the right decision. There's not really such a thing. What I do feel is missing from all of these facts and the risks of disease that we've discussed is a discussion on the curability of the condition along very much with the cost of treatment of that condition. So some people will choose not to spay and instead be quite happy to watch out for signs of pyometra and act if they occur, as well as having any mammary masses removed as soon as they appear. Now it's true that this approach it will reduce the risks of these conditions being fatal, although not to eliminate them completely, and it might be a perfectly reasonable balance between these curable conditions and other non-curable conditions, that, and, and the, an approach that you really wish to take. This approach though, it does have the potential to cost an awful lot of money, and that might be really, really significant, and with around 38% of entire female dogs suffering from either a pyometra or from mammary masses, there is a one in three chance of your dog being affected and needing major and expensive surgery. It may though be that this would not be something that you'd be able to afford and these treatable conditions then become untreatable and fatal. Or you may decide that, you decide that you're just not prepared to take the risk from your dog dying from pyometra or untreatable malignant mammary cancer. You may place greater emphasis on the fact that our spayed females do appear to live longer lives, potentially by as much as 25%. And this then comes back to my interpretation of all this information. And so the general recommendations that I make at this point in time. So I definitely feel that the benefits of being spayed outweigh the drawbacks and believe that all female dogs who aren't going to be used for breeding, and you should really think if you do want to breed your dog, I believe that they should all be spayed. For small breed dogs, I'd still recommend spaying when they are around six months of age before their first season. And that's just to reduce that mammary cancer risk by as much as possible. For larger breed dogs, however, where there is no risk of them becoming pregnant and also where they can be successfully managed while they're on heat, I recommend actually delaying this procedure until they reach one year of age or even a little older. So you may disagree with this and that is absolutely fine. All I hope for is that you are aware of and and have considered all of the risks and the benefits whatever decision you come to. Also you need to understand that no option is completely free of risks. Now I know there is a lot of information and figures to take in but to make a truly informed decision we need to discuss and we need to consider all of these facts. If you're still confused though please leave me a question down below and I'll try my very best to answer you. Also, if it's your first time here, consider subscribing to make sure that you don't miss out on future videos just like this one, although they're generally a little bit shorter and not so complicated, and allow me to continue to help you and your dog to live healthier, happier lives. So until next time, I'm Dr. Alex from Our Pets Health, because they're family.